here is a, a first uh, list, once again, non-exhaustive. So many of them are not written down, this kind of uh, uh, written down on this slide uh, of possible websites. So you have many, many, once again, portal uh, with a different level of data access and visualization. Sometimes you want to download data to conduct your own analysis, for example, if you are a researcher or a student. <clears throat> but sometimes you just look to, just want to visualize some results, interesting results in terms of climate or impact. So I'm distinguishing, uh, I'm, I'm, I distinguish both uh, kind of uh, access. Here is a list of, uh, of four major uh, uh, web portal. ESGF and Copernicus uh, provide uh, um, related, um, similar, let's say similar, when, even if it's not the case, a kind of data they provide. Copernicus provide uh, as much as observations as simulated, uh, projected future simulation uh, data in terms of climate. So you have uh, temperature, uh, wind, precipitation, simulations uh, in, in, over ESGF and also observations in Copernicus. Copernicus also provides uh, already calculated climate indices, for example, heat waves indices or maximum precipitation indices. NASA Princeton, once again, I will provide uh, the, the slide and the link. Uh, this particular website provides correction uh, of the, some uh, simulations that have been conducted by uh, climate scientists. As you may know, when uh, simulations are uh, conducing, uh, the raw data that are extracted from these results may not be, uh, there is always a bias. Model does not, uh, models do not tell the truth once again, so there is a bias. So uh, usually, and especially in when we are going to explore some impacts in terms of agriculture or hydrology, we have to bias correct climate outputs with observations try to, let's say, calibrate the such uh, outputs, climate outputs. And uh, it can take time uh, in terms, it takes time, a lot of computing resources. So NASA Princeton uh, has uh, corrected uh, some of the most famous uh, climate simulations, so semi six, so coupled models, uh, intercomparison project, so the fifth uh, the fifth uh, phase, so that has been used to draw the conclusion of the last IPCC, and that is currently uh, the most recent uh, multi-model, multi-climate model uh, uh, exercise. So it's already corrected, so it's very important, I think, to have access to this. Uh, you don't have to conduct your own calculation, which is uh, sometimes really, really complicated for all of us. And Easy MIP is the same kind of uh, MIP, so model intercomparison project exercise, but for impacts. For example, if you are interested in future projections of crop yields, maize yields, rice yields, wheat yields, you have freely uh, access to such simulations. So Easy MIP is an exercise that uses semip uh, in terms of climate inputs and then perform simulations of uh, impact uh, of impacts of global warming. So you have data of crop yields, you have data of river discharge, uh, you have uh, lots of results for different, uh, different scenario, global warming scenario. So this is the kind of website you can have access to, freely have access. Usually you have to register with an email address and you will be able to have access download uh, uh, data, so raw data. So if you have the possibility to download such a large, once again, big uh, and large data sets, this is where you can find them. But what is also important sometimes, it's not to just, well, not just, but row, roughly download data and compute things. You can quickly visualize some uh, results. So once again, there is a plenty of websites that are doing it. The World Bank is doing it as well. Here I present you one of them, which is easiness. So you have access to uh, climate indices as well. So you already have some climate indices computed. So you can see some trends, you can see some spatial visualization as well. 
So you don't, you can also download data, I think, but you don't have to, to visualize and have an information right away. And I want to focus a few minutes on climate suit because I, I contributed to <coughs> this portal, <coughs> sorry, this portal, so climate climate uh, the friendly way. Climate suit uh, provides, uh, let's say, a service of such raw climate data, climate indices and impacts, but already computed and uh, available in a friendly user way. So it means that if you go on climate suit, you can visualize quickly, for example, the projections of the crop yields of a specific grid point or a specific country or a specific area in South America, America in Africa and in Southern Asia. So this is how it looks like. Uh, you can select the language French or English and maybe Spanish, I'm not sure now, uh, to, uh, to visualize the website. This is how it looks. Uh, so once again, Klima Sud, you have the link here, but I will provide it to you again later. You have to register once again uh, to follow how uh, the data and the website website is used. Uh, for now, the, the, the use is strictly, strictly limited to research and academical uh, people. You cannot use this data, of course, to, to sell them. How does it work? You create an account, you are connected, and then you can go to the data room here. In the data room, you can uh, whether select to focus on one point on the map, on one country on the map, or you can draw a region or a polygon to focus on the data you are going to uh, visualize in terms of graph. So you can select a, map, a point right here. You can select a country or you can draw a polygon by yourself. So once again, in Africa, in South America, or in Southeastern Asia. Then you select the variable you want to look at, the indices. You have many of them, temperature, impact. So the easy MIP data I talked about, you already have it computed in, uh, uh, with uh, the, the, well, simplified uh, easy access, but it's still the raw data. You choose the specific indicator. For example, if you look at uh, in terms of impacts of easy MIP impact, you may want just to look at the wheat uh, yields or maybe the, the, the burnt uh, area surface in terms of fractions. You can just explore as much as you want such uh, data. Same goes for temperature right here. So annual minimum, minimum temperature, number of, of days above a certain threshold. You select the scenario you want to look at in terms of warming. So the historical goes from uh, 19, uh, 1850 to 2020, 2014, sorry. And you have a different warming scenario, the SSP1 2.6 being the less emissive and the less warming scenario, and the SSP5 8.5 being the warmest, the most emissive scenario. You extract the data, the, the web portal itself, it's not your computer or your connection, the web portal extracts and plots the graph, the information you want for your, the specific region and indices you wanted. And you obtain such graph for the region you asked for. So you have the time series, uh, depending on relative you or absolute uh, values for, you have it aggregated per year, per month, per day for a specific scenario if you ask for uh, different scenarios. And you can export this, whether you can export the data, so in CSV for, sm uh, for small uh, files or in NetPDF for bigger files. Uh, and uh, or just if you want to download the obtained figures just to illustrate PowerPoint or illustrate something or for you to explore it, you can download the, the the figures right here. So this is for the the impacts of climate change and where you can find such data. Uh, I think we can, yeah, we can uh, process now. We can discuss right now for this part. So I can then talk about attribution. 
uh, and we will have also, of course, time to discuss about attribution and your questions uh, after the second part of, of the talk. So please feel free to, to ask your question about what has been said here. I don't know, Aramid, maybe it's your hand is still raised from earlier, or do you have another question? Please let me know. Oh, sorry, I think it's from Helia. Okay, no problem, thanks. Yeah. And yeah, um, I guess, um, I think, yeah, the, my slide, uh, I, I can share my slide later, right? Like sending an email or to, to share the links because, uh, yeah, I, I still have to keep up with the time, so I, I'm not sure everyone had the time to write down the links, the website links. Yes, you send the information to me and I will uh, transfer all this to uh, the participants. Perfect. And you have a question in the chat box. Oh, yeah, sorry. Okay. I, uh... Climate data from this site for smaller area within. Yes, yes, that's a very good question. I didn't, I didn't mention it. Uh, for example, for let me just illustrate it for this. Uh, uh, when you look, uh, when you want a specific uh, region, you can see, take one point, one grid point, one country, or one polygon or one area. And in this example, yeah, it takes larger than some countries, but you can draw very tiny, uh, tiny uh, polygon as well. You can just select one region of a specific country. Uh, I don't know, maybe I don't know, south of Senegal, Casamance, or 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 Niamey for for Niger, or yeah, yeah, you can uh, you can definitely. The limitation being the size uh, of the grid points. I think it's. Um, I don't want to. See say nonsense i would say that it's one grid one grid point is 25 kilometers or 50 kilometers so you will obtain uh, at least an information for this side so if you want uh, thinner uh, more precise more, more precise sorry information uh, you it's not possible yet Is there, uh, is there no impact for rice in Africa? Because I didn't notice it in the figure presented. Uh, yeah. So let me go back to what you say. Uh, no, it depends on the regions. Uh, 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 indeed, for Eastern Africa, Southern Africa, the models uh, were not performed. So I wouldn't be sure there is no impact at all. But at least simulations are not provided probably because there is no, uh, well, not say no rice yields over there, but at least not enough to be able to be captured by models. But in terms of Northern Africa and Western Africa, there is uh, impacts uh, and the, the uncertainties are uh, actually uh, smaller for rice. The box plot are all really close to each other, the values in the box plot right here. But uh, yeah. I hope it uh, answers to your question, Jean-Pierre. Please feel free to tell me. And yeah, once again, what I present is an overall, um, uh, not say conclusion, but no, an overall view of um, of the the impacts that are simulated or and observed but more specifically per region, per cities, per country, uh, these uh, results might change, the conclusion might be different. Uh, of course, that's a very important point you are raising right here. Any other question on this part? Well, 
Well, actually, if you have another question that pops up during the second part of the presentation, please feel free to ask because it will still correspond to impacts and global warming, uh, of course. So in the first, oh, there is a mistake right here. In the first part, I talk about, well, present about um, uh, impacts of global warming uh, in Africa, but uh, a challenge, a current challenge, uh, to draw this kind of conclusion is to really attribute a given impacts or a given event to global warming, to the human activities. And uh, in terms of such uh, research, uh, it's called the attribution research field. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna introduce some, um, some quick definitions, well, some quick notions, then present the two major methods that are used to, to, to develop, to, to conduct such attribution analysis. Uh, once again, uh, I can uh, afterward provide you papers, references uh, about this kind of results, uh, and if you are really interested in such uh, fields. And uh, if I have the time, and I really hope I do, uh, I will present you once again a portal uh, that has been developed from uh, in Netherlands uh, by colleagues in Netherlands that on where you can upload your own time series of data and conduct attribution, quick statistical attribution uh, study, but I will go more in detail right now. So a little bit of context for attribution, uh, global warming, once again, uh, I'm not going to take time here for that. But in parallel, because of such uh, well-known, let's say, well-known results, when uh, a climate-related event occurs directly, uh, straight away in our mind, in media, and even by big major authorities, for example, the UN, right away, if there is a heat wave or a fire, a big fire somewhere, we directly, we, we straight away think it's because of the global warming. Sometimes it is a case, it's proven by scientific facts and studies that it's the case, but sometimes it's not. And in order to try to, to, to difference and to be able to say this event uh, can be attributable or is not attributable to global warming, climate scientists have, have developed the research field called the attribution. So this corresponds more specifically to what is called the detection and the attribution. So in climate scientists, first we have to detect if a specific event or a specific anomaly is really, really abnormal, or could it have been possible in a natural world without any human influences, human forcing? So this is called a detection. We detect, statistically detect an abnormal event. And the second uh, part of that is to try to understand the possible causes behind that. So is it due to global warming or it's not? And if it's not, ca what can be the contribution of such uh, event or trend? This uh, research field uh, is conducted for many years, uh, but uh, as uh, unfortunately the case, it's uh, most of the studies uh, are conducted over Europe or the US. So now for a few past, let's say five years, more or less, there is more and more studies uh, over Africa, over African countries, over specific events on Africa's countries, African countries, for example, the food, cr I work on the food crisis in Niger, uh, the food crisis that occurred in Niger in 2022. Uh, there have been some uh, analyses uh, over flood in Senegal as well. And, uh, and it's starting now to emerge, uh, but there is still uh, not enough uh, data and not enough analysis uh, uh, about attribution on such uh, African countries. Still, there is some results, even the confidence is always uh, moderated. If you look at the IPCC once again, uh, many or at least uh, on what we know, so the studies we have conducted, uh, there is uh, an attribution, there is impacts and climate trends attributable to uh, uh, human-induced, sorry, global warming. So for example, on this map, uh, you have uh, the, the, you have represented how uh, climate trends is attributable to, to, 
to global warming. So when you have colors, it's both for temperature, uh, it's weather for temperature or for precipitation. So you have a climate trend that is attributable to human activities. And if you have shaded uh, areas, it means that it is shown at least in few uh, studies that the climate trends are attributable both for temperature and for precipitation. So for many uh, places, there is a lack of uh, knowledge. So whether there is no attribution, whether we are not able to detect it, so there is still a lot of things to do. But for some regions, for example, yeah, Senegal right here, uh, or around Benin or Togo, you have uh, an attribution, a strong attribution to uh, human-induced, uh, a robust, let's not say strong, but robust in terms of statistics attribution to global warming. Uh, so Africa uh, overall uh, has already experienced uh, loss in damages due to global warming. So now in terms of really attribution, if you are interested to, to focus on this kind of, of uh, field, uh, it's really complex. Uh, it's a really complex exercise because you cannot you can never say it is for sure attributable to global warming and it is for sure not attributable to global warming. It's still uh, statistics, it's still uh, computing. So we can only discuss and talk in terms of probability. There is a certain amount of change. There is a certain amount of probability that this event, for example, a heat wave in France is attributable, is caused by global warming. So it's really important to say that we do not and never can say that formally that this event is explained by the global warming. Uh, and also mostly because, uh, because even a rare event uh, might have happened already sometime somewhere. So yeah, it's still statistical. So we only talk in terms of probability, really want to, to, to state that to, 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 yeah, to mention it really, really strongly. How does it work concretely? In laboratories, uh, in other kind of science, in other sciences, when you want to compare, uh, you, you when you want to, to, well, let's say, not 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 putting it that way, but the only way we could have in real life to know if uh, a given event or a given trend will have occur without global warming would be to create another world without the human influence and see how it goes and how it evolves. We cannot do that. We cannot, in laboratory, create another world, another climate. So instead we use statistics and dynamical models. And what we do is that we create the world we know now, the climate we know, so the climate evolving with the global warming, with the human activities, the greenhouse gases emissions increasing. We reproduce with the model this kind of uh, climate try to correspond to observations. In this scenario, we call it the factual world. We call it the factual climate. And using the same model, we run it again, but without the human activities, without the human components. So we create a fake world, a fake climate without any human activities, but with all other natural forcing that we are aware of, that we understand right now how it works, you know, our current knowledge about that. And we call it the counterfactual, uh, like the opposite of the reality, let's say it well, more or less, counterfactual world. And to attribute, to conduct an attribution, you compare the two worlds, you compare the two climates, the factual, so with the global warming against the counterfactual, the climate, but without any human, um, any human activities. Many methods exist to do that. So you can obviously use, as I just told, the dynamical model. You perform a simulation of the climate, factual climate. You perform a similar simulation, but without uh, human activities, counterfactual. So 